Hi everyone, Kelly Clement here from Metastock. In this video, I'm excited to introduce you to Metastock 18. Metastock 18 is, of course, our latest, greatest, and best version of Metastock to date. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the new features of Metastock 18. We're going to be talking about the new charting engine. We've taken the chart, we've built it from the ground up, and added in lots of cool features. We're going to be talking about options analysis and how all the new options tools that we've added inside of Metastock can help you in your everyday trading. We'll be talking about the quality of life enhancements we've made. Then we'll also be talking about the systems and strategies that we've added in. So there's a lot to cover. Let's go ahead and get into the presentation. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive right into the Metastock 18 presentation. Now, the first thing I always have to do when I start a presentation is I do have to read you a legal disclaimer. So let's go ahead and jump right into the disclaimer, get that out of the way so we can get into the presentation. This demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and accompanying software plugins, and it's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading, Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided with in connection with the company. So there's our disclaimer. That's out of the way. Let's go ahead and jump into the presentation and start talking about Metastock 18. So here's kind of a synopsis of what we're going to be going through today, just really quickly. And we've already kind of talked about this. So uh, we're going to be talking about the new chart. Uh, we're going to be talking about the options analysis. We'll be talking about quote center. Um, new ease of use features and the and the uh, power console update and then finally the systems and strategies at the end so let's go ahead and jump into the new chart and talk about what's there now when i mentioned that we took the chart and we built it from the ground up we really did we kind of started fresh with the chart and said well what are the things that we need to add to the chart take and fix with the chart and then what feedback have we gotten from our users over the years about what we should do with the chart and we took all of that information and compiled it when we built this new chart. So as we get into it, you'll see we have 15 charting styles inside of here. We have 16 new themes, new customization abilities and indicators, scrolling functionality, drawing, uh, drawing tools, and chart usability. So there's a lot to get into. Let's go ahead and start with charting itself because that's kind of the core of the chart is the charting itself. Here are the 15 different charting styles that we have. So you can see kind of a broad range of them. Uh, a lot of the classic ones that we've had, but even in the classic ones, we've added in a lot of new features. So we'll get into that. So notably, some new things that we've added in. Heikinashi is a new one. Uh, we've also added in some new line styles, uh, the stepped line, the histogram, the step field line, uh, the field line. And then we've added a lot of enhancements to the alternate charting types, the, uh, the Ranko, Kagi, point and figure, three line break. All those have some new enhancements to them as well. So let's go ahead and go over into Metastock, go into the chart and take a look at some of these new features that we've actually added in here. So now when you come into the chart and you look at it at first glance, you can actually tell that it's newer and that it's refreshed. It's got a great feel to it. It's very visually um, appealing and easy to, easy to look at. And that's always been one of the hallmarks of the Metastock chart is its visual appeal to it. And that hasn't been lost at all. So let's go ahead and let's look at the chart. So right now we're looking at a standard candlestick chart. And if you've had Metastock in the past, you'll notice that this is a little different than a standard Metastock candlestick chart in that a lot of people have asked us over time, hey, I want to be able to fill my candles or have them hollow. I want, I want them both ways. So there's the traditional hollow candles uh, versus the filled candles. And so we've added that ability here to start. So let's actually just start with the parameters of the candlestick as that's uh, one of the big enhancements here. So let's go ahead and just double click. That's how we add uh, edit anything inside of the chart. And you'll see here I'm on my candlestick chart. Well, now you see some additional options here. You see up color, which would be our up color. You see an up fill, a down color, and a down fill. So you can go in and you can set your up color and then a different color for the fill or however you want to do this. You can also come in here 
and you can uh, mess with the RGB, which is a just a sliding scale for colors here. And then you can also change your transparency if you'd like to as well. So you can set a darker fill, a more transparent fill, or kind of a medium fill. And the medium fill is on by default. So you can play with all of that now here in the chart. You can also change how the candle fill or coloring is calculated. So if you want to do an open to close or a close to close. So you can set this however you want to in the parameters. And then you can also set if you want the fill mode to be filled, as we're seeing on the chart now, or a close less than open, which is more your traditional candlestick style. So you can set all this right inside of the, the parameters, set it. And then what's awesome here is now is you can actually save these uh, as part of your template. So when you save a template, that would be saved as a template. If you feel like you've messed something up, you can come down here and you can re restore the defaults back to what they were when you first opened up the when Metastocks defaults. Uh, so all that is available to change and kind of work with. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and apply that, go back to where we were. Let's look at some of the other charting styles really quickly. You can also do the now, you could calculate the up and down colors on bars based off of the up down mode as well. So this has been enhanced and changed as well. In things like Heikenashi, if I go down to Heikenashi and choose apply, just to show you the Heikenashi chart. So traditionally, let's move me over here so we can zoom in a little bit. I need to go okay here. So let's just take a look at our standard Heikenashi chart here. So you can see the Heikenashi chart is plotted. If you prefer fill on the Heikenashi, you can also fill it just like any of the other candlestick styles. We also have added in additions to things like point and figure, Renko, all these different ones. We're not going to go into each and every one of them, but whatever charting style you use, be aware it's been enhanced. There are new things that you can do with whatever charting style that you use. So if I come in into point and figure and go to parameters, you can see here I have options for box size. I can set it off of ATR or average true range. I can set it on a traditional method, points only. I can do mess with my uh, reversal amount and then change how it's calculated on the price field. So there is a lot of different options that you can play with here in these different charting styles. So as you're playing with this system and the style that you use the most, be aware again that you can change all that. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's go back to candlesticks. We'll just kind of keep that as our default for the moment. And now we're back to our candlestick chart. Okay, so that's some enhancements there. Again, very visually appealing. I love the look of the new chart, the feel of it, how it kind of enhances everything that I'm doing. And you're going to see a lot more as we go through. Now, the next thing that we're actually going to get into here is we're going to talk a little bit about colors. Now you can see here, I have a bright white theme going on right now, and that's the default setting inside of Metastock. So my chart is by default white in the background. Now, a lot of people like to customize that. They like their, their different modes, different color schemes. And so we've added in what we call now themes. So rather than uh, going through, and I'll just move me over here for just a second. I'm gonna bounce around a bit. So all these different themes are different modes that you can change it to based off of your preferences. And when you set a theme, you can also save it in a template. So however you want your chart views to be, it's very, very easy to set up. So you can see we have uh, ranges from black, black radiant, black steel, bright spark, white, chrome, dark mode, electric, expression dark. So there's a lot of different ones to play with here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and go over into Metastock so I can show you a few of these different themes and how they look on the chart. So let's go ahead and tab over. And when I'm looking at this, what I, all I need to do to change the color scheme is I need to go down to this little paint palette down here in the right hand corner. And you'll see if I hover it over it, it says chart themes. So I'm going, ahead, going to go ahead and click on this. And then if I go here, I can click on bright white, which will change it just a little bit from where I was. I can click on contrast and you can see what the chart will do is it'll automatically in the background change the way that you're viewing the chart than if you were to just change it based off of the color scheme. So it makes it a, an auto adapting view of the chart. So you can see that will change every time that I make a change here. 
So as I go through this, it's very evident that it makes it easy for you to be able to view this and see this. Now, if you don't want that auto adjusting kind of color scheme to go on, we've actually added an enhancement here where you could go into tools, options, chart options, and then you can turn off auto adjusting for color plots. So if you prefer to really set your own tones and have it stay like that as you change colors, just turn this feature off and you won't have to worry about that anymore. So it makes it really easy there. Okay, so that's chart themes. Let's go ahead and go over here and go on to our next section here, which is the scroll preview. Uh, scroll preview actually is probably one of my favorite features of the chart because it makes it really easy to navigate around the chart. So let's go ahead and go over to the chart and show you kind of how this works and how it can actually help you in navigating your chart. And again, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to bounce around. I'm sorry. So the chart scroll is actually this down here. You'll notice when I'm looking at this, you're going to see this dividing line. And then here it's kind of grayed out and here it's inverted from that gray line. And what we're seeing here is this area from this part of the scroll over is what I'm actually seeing on the chart. So this is actually my chart view right now as a preview. So back here is a historical view of everything else that's loaded that I'm not looking at right now. Okay, so if I scroll this, you can see I can grab this bar and I can move it back and forth to see what happened on the chart in those different views. So just grabbing this and moving it around is a very easy way to navigate around the chart. Now let's say I see something on the chart that I wanted to, I want to kind of zoom in on. Let's just take a look back here. I wanted to see what happened back here. Well, I can just click on that and it'll just zoom the chart over to where I clicked so I can instantly see where that is. And you can see I can just click through the chart to get that view. And then I can move this wheel, this area, to kind of move through the chart and make sure I can see everything that's happening on it. So it's a really easy way to navigate through the chart and kind of scroll through. The other thing you can do is you can just hold down your left mouse button and you can grab and you can scroll through the chart as well. So it makes it easy to just kind of move back and forth if you want to see what, what's happening on the chart. So there's lots of ways to navigate around the chart. You still have the classic plus and minus that you can use as well. So we've added in some extra ways to be able to navigate through the chart a little bit easier as well. So we talked about all those different uh, objects here. Let's talk about indicators. So we've added in a lot of extra features on the indicators as well. So I mean, indicators are always a big part of charting and, and technical analysis. So we wanted to make it easier for you to be able to do the things that you want to be able to do with it with a lot of customization. Now there's a lot here. We're not gonna go through every one of these. I wanted to show you a lot of the enhancements. We're going to focus on just a few of them just to kind of give you a high level view of some of the new features that you can do with indicators. So let's go ahead and jump over to here. And let's go ahead and just take a few examples. I'm just going to start with a MACD, uh, excuse me, moving average to start. So I'm just going to come up here, grab my moving average and just bring it onto the chart. Now, when you bring it onto the chart, it comes with defaults. All the indicators in Metastock are set to a certain default. That may not be what you want as a default. So what we're going to do is show you some changes we can make here. Let's just take our moving average. Let's make it an eight period moving average and let's make it exponential. And if I come over here to color style, the default color is red, but let's make it blue and let's make it a little bit thicker of a, of a moving average. So if I click okay on that, you'll see that'll plot. Now, if I go back into the properties and if I were to go plot another moving average, it would default to that 25 period. Now, when you first come in and you want to just plot a moving average, if you want it to be this eight period exponential that's blue with a thicker line, we can save that as a default now. So I can come down here, go to save all pages as a default. So that saves, when I'm saying pages, it's each of these tabs. So it's saving all of them as a default. So let's save all pages, hit OK. And now that's my default parameter for every time I plot a moving average now. So it makes it a little bit easier to be able to do that. 
Now, with all these built-in indicators and their and their functions, one of the things that you would historically have to do is tell Metastock where you wanted to plot an indicator. Well, now all these built-in indicators are smart, so they know where they should go. So, for example, if I was to do a MACD, well, let's actually do the MACD histogram. So the MACD histogram is new built-in. People have wanted the MACD histogram for quite a period of time, so we put the MACD histogram in here. So if I just drag it on the chart, now the MACD histogram should go in its own window. So it's going to be smart enough to know when I drop it that it should just create a window and put it in its own box. So if I click OK there, you can see it plots the MACD histogram for me, and then everything is set. So I don't now have to worry about trying to remember where it should go, what it should do. And of course, I can grab this, I can move it around, and then drag and drop it however I want to and customize it. Now, if you do want to put it over the chart, you still can do that. So that's available, but a lot of customization and flexibility there. Okay, some other enhancements here is this, um, oh, so let me actually go back to the moving average here. So in the plotting styles, we've also made some enhancements in the different line styles that you can do. So now you have some options here. You can do a line, a step line, a filled line, step filled line, and a dot and a histogram. So it gives you a lot more options here to do. Uh, my favorite is the, is the filled line. So if I do the filled line, let's, uh, let's change the fill to blue and then make it a little more transparent and click apply. So now you can fill under indicators. So if you want this filled view of an indicator. So here I have my moving average with a fill under it. So I can quickly see when it's above the moving average and give myself a good view of that. I can take this and I can plot it in its own window if that's how I prefer to view it. Let's grab the moving average. Let's put it up here in its own window. And there you can see it in its own window or we could put it back over the chart. So there's a lot of different views again here. If we go in here, there's a step line, which gives it more of an updated daily kind of look. Or you can do uh, the step filled line, which kind of is a combination, dot, histogram. You get the idea. So there's a lot of different customizations, and that can all be saved as part of that parameter. Another new indicator we've added in is this uh, volume up down. So you can see the red and green volume. That's always been a big uh, request from Metastock customers. And you can calculate it one of two ways. So you can calculate it on the close. So if the close is lower day over day, then the bar would be red. If it's higher, then it would be green. Or you can say, well, is the volume higher day over day or is it lower day over day? So you can view it either way uh, that you want to. Okay, so there's some enhancements there. Another enhancement we've done, let's take the moving average off here, is we've made it now so you can plot the Ichimoku into the future. Let's go ahead and grab that. That's been a big request over the years as well, is to go ahead and make sure that that plots in the future, and now that will plot into the future. Now, and as, as you're doing this, some of the things that we've done as well is we've made it so you can go in and you can change the colors per line in a formula. It used to be very cumbersome to change the formulas per line. Now it's very easy to do that. You can just go into the color style and it will show each line on any indicator, even your own um, custom written indicators. If it has multiple lines, you can change the color per line so you don't have to do it all individually. It actually is a much better uh, experience with that. So there's the Ichimoku and that ability to customize per line all right there. So let's go ahead and take that off the chart. And let's see uh, if there's anything else we want to get to. Uh, plot styles, uh, oh, fill between envelopes, uh, like Bollinger Bands. Let's just put Bollinger Bands on here. So if I put Bollinger Bands on, or any type of band, you can actually set it to fill between the bands, so that way you can actually see uh, what's going on um, in the band range. Another thing you can do that's kind of cool is you can take this and let's actually do this with a moving average here to show you this one. Let's delete this off and let's put our moving average back on. And you, see, you can see it retained all of our default settings. If I want to, if I want more of an emphasis on price, I can right click here and I can move the indicator to the back. So that way it kind of goes behind the, the visuals 
or I can move it to the front. So it makes it so I can yeah, so I can focus more on either the indicator or the price by moving it front or back. So that's a that's a graphical thing that some people like to do, and that's that's available as an option in there as well. Okay, um, p variable. We're not going to go into that one. We've talked about everything else here, except for indicators can be invisible. If you use multiple indicators and you want a plot, you can actually set one uh, to invisible. If you just want an indicator of an indicator, but just view the one, you can set it to invisible. Okay. Drawing tools. So there's a lot of enhancements here in drawing tools that people have been asking us for a long time. So let's go ahead and jump right into these. There's a lot of different ones again, but we'll kind of hit the highlights here. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and delete off our moving average. Let's take off this MACD. And let's start with the trend line. Oh, well, let's turn the trend line tool on here. Okay. So the trend line, if I come in and I plot the trend line, you note know, it looks just like the standard trend line that's always been in Metastock. But what you can do to start is if I hover over this trend line, it's going to give me a lot more information about the trend line to start. So here you'll, you can see I, have, I can have my date, I have my value slope of the trend line, how many periods that trend line is drawn over, the, the points change, so this was a 26% move, excuse me, 27, 26 point move, and then a 27% move. So you can see that all that information right on the tooltip. But what if you actually want to see it on the trend line? Well, you can actually go into the trend line here, and you can turn on and off what you would like to see and what you don't want to see. So if I choose, let's choose a label here, and let's just do percent change. So if I click OK, you can see it adds percent change in there. And then I can move this around the trend line or even outside the trend line if I would like. So it's it's movable. I can go in here, I can change my font size if, you, if you'd like to, that's customizable down here. I can change that to info. I can add the number of periods to it. So if I choose that, you can see it adds the number of periods to it. Or I can set this as a custom label. Let's say I just wanted to name it trend. So you can see my trend is now in there as well. Now, the other thing that you can do is if you use this to make notes, you can also do that. So let's just turn on a right arrow here, choose apply and OK. So let's just say I would I had made a note there and you can see it'll flip the text to make sure it's legible and not upside down. So if I'd made a note there and then pointed to it and done something like that, you can see that I can see that's something important. So you can use it as making a tool for making notes as well. So it's kind of a multi-function uh, tool now. You can also come in here and change your color and style. If you don't like the blue, let's say we like it green, a little bit thicker. You can see it adapts that and changes it. And then I can make that my default. Again, so the, the ability to save defaults and save things is way better inside of Metastock 18 uh, than it has been, allowing you to save and be, be there with your customizations. I mean, it's, it's an important thing to be able to save these types of things. And so we've taken that feedback and really added in to Metastock 18. Okay, so let's go ahead and cancel here. Let's go ahead and delete this off. Uh, and that kind of translates over into other things like projection, projections and retracements. So let's actually grab a Fibonacci retracement here and let's put that on our chart. Okay, so when I'm looking at this now, you'll notice I am showing percentage and price here. So that's a new option where you're seeing both. But the big enhancement here is that you can now add your own lines and you can save them as a, as a default. And this has been a, been a huge request over the years and something that's really, really important. So let's, uh, let's go in here. So let's say I wanted to add a 75% retracement. So I can go ahead and add that. And then I can also change the color of that line. So let's say I wanted that line to be green and I wanted it dashed. Okay, so there it is right there. And if I want this to show up every time, well, I can just save it as a default. And then every time it shows up, that 75% that I put on there in green 
will be there and be part of uh, my my chart. So it's a it's a lot more customization. You can change the whole color scheme all at once if you prefer a different color. You can change the the control line settings, which is the dashed line that's on there that's going across. You can set uh, to uh, no no snap or period or price. And that's actually true across just about every drawing tool as well. So you can add in all these, these different options, the price period or none. Uh, here you could also calculate levels uh, on percent change on a logarithmic scale. So there's a lot, again, just about every tool that you're going to use inside of Metastock has now been enhanced uh, as far as the charting goes. So lots of awesome, awesome things in here. Now there's, there's some other charting styles. We're not going to get into every charting style. We'd be here for a couple hours if we were to do that. But just to highlight a few more things for you. Uh, one is the Don Fishback odds probability cone. So when we were enhancing these tools, we talked to Don Fishback and we said, hey, well, you know, what, what is something that you would like to improve with the probability cone? So typically the probability cone shows a single probability cone of value. And with this enhancement, what we've done is we've actually added in multiple probability cones. So this Metastock 18 is one of the first platforms to have these multiple probability cones. And if I plot this, you can see that it'll plot the two different cones. Let's just go into the parameters here. And what's cool is you can actually add as many different probability zones as you want. So if I added a 33%, and click apply, you can see that 33% probability. And then you have the 68, and then you have the 95. So you can add these probability zones and it will shade and color them based off of that. So if I were to change my color, say to red, you would see it, it would shade all of them in various colors. You can also, you can go back and change your, vol your historical look back period. You can set specific volatility. So you'll see that will change it a little bit. And then you can add a drift. So this is again, brand new. Metastock 18 is the first platform to have this in working with Don Fishback. So if I were to add a drift of one, you can see it shifts it up quite a bit. So you can set uh, out to the decimals this drift. So there's a lot of lots of new cool things here. So if you haven't used the probability cone, it's a great options tool, it's designed around options. So take a look at it. There's lots of great information in the Metastock help about it as well. Uh, let's also just show you the Andrews Pitchfork. Now I'm just going to draw this here. I'm not going to draw it correctly. I'll just draw it really quick. And the Andrews Pitchfork typ typically draws these three lines. Now what we've done here is we've added in different methodologies for the, uh, for the Pitchfork. So you can do a standard shift or modified shift in the way that it's plotted. And you can see that that plots very differently. So there's different ways to look at this. You can also add in your own warning lines. Let's just add in two warning lines and you can see it will extend it out. And then you can also add in your own custom lines if you want to as well. And then of course, modify color styles, all that as well. So awesome, awesome updates to this. Some other just uh, features, um, you can, the text property box is easier to access. Uh, again, saving defaults is the huge one. That's, uh, that's one that's been requested for a long time uh, from Metastock users, that ability to save all these things. And the crosshairs, uh, let me go ahead and show you the crosshairs really quickly because there was an enhancement made to those as well. So let's go back to Metastock. And if I go to the crosshairs, if I turn those on, you can see it will show the X and Y values here uh, as I move through the chart. So you can see the date and the value of where the crosshair is. Let's go ahead and turn that off. So that's the crosshairs. All right, so let, next we're going to talk about the axes and a little bit of a few of the enhancements that have been made to the axes in the chart. So now as we go through here and we look at this, the if we look at the Y axes and the X axes, let's go down here to the X axes first. If you, if you choose this, you can set a lot of these same settings that you've always been able to set. We've just kind of in, improved the window here a little bit. Uh, the nice thing now is we have added grid bands, so you can see grid bands as well. Over in the Y axis, you can now set your scales in a lot more, in an easier fashion. 
you can set your grid bands and grid lines in here as well. So if you like those that grid band view. On the scale, what's nice is over here on our price marker, you can now set how you want to view the, uh, the symbol definition. So if you look at this, if right now you can see it goes out six spaces. And if I wanted that to be a little bit less, I could change that down to two decimal places. I could go out to nine decimal places if I wanted to. I could view it in fractions or view it however I'd like. Uh, by default, it's the symbol definition is the way that you'd look at it. And now you can also see all the indicator values in the Y axis as well. So if I were to come up here, let's put our moving average on. And you'll see it'll put that moving average value right up there. And then if I add something like the MACD histogram, uh, you'll see it, I can turn on the values. They are not on on every indicator by default, but I can put them on there. And then if I save that as a template, or again, if I save the, the defaults, it will stay there for me. So there, it's very easy to customize and keep all that. But template is the easiest way to set that up and have those appear. The other nice thing is with the Y axis is you can, it, it's a lot easier to move it around, kind of scale it how you would like to see it. You can also easily reset that scale by clicking the little reset scale value right here. So some nice little enhancements to the Y and X axis. Um, if you if you like to play in, in those axes. Uh, let's see, okay, uh, other updates in the chart. So this one uh, I really, really like is this most recently used in selected time frame periods. So what this is, is when we're dealing with, let's go up here for a minute. When we're dealing with multiple time frames, uh, I'm using Metastock RT if you're using end of day, you'd have daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly. Uh, with the RT, we have these predefined settings in here. Now you may have some settings that you like or that a uh, time frame that you like to trade. So if you do, when you set a custom time frame, it will remember your four most recently used. Uh, and talking to users, that was typically about uh, what people would use would be have about four different custom time frames that they would use. So I can just set my custom time frames in here and then I can just bounce to them. And in that marker, what it will do is it will show me what interval I have selected. So you can see I have IM2, so that's intraday minute two. If I were to switch to a 75 minute, you go to intraday minute 75, uh, so on and so forth. Now, if I had a, a custom day, let's say I, if I was on an end of day and I wanted a two day, Uh, you can see it'll say a D2 for two days. And you can also see that up here in the upper right hand corner. It'll always show your time frame that you're looking at as well. I just like it on that marker right there as well. So it's a, it's a nice little enhancement there uh, for that. Um, for some of these, we're not going to go through all of these again, but changing tile settings as chart load. So as if you're loading 30 charts or something at the same time, you can click the tile button, it'll tile as it's loading. So you can kind of change those parameters. Um, the auto, the color correction on off, we already talked about that, uh, but let's talk about auto color correction and auto aliasing again here really quickly, just in the chart options. Okay, so remember we talked about, when we were talking about themes, this ability to come up here and go to tools options and you can turn on and off that auto adjusting for color plots if you want to. But we also have this other option here that's called enable anti-aliasing. Well, what that is, it's actually a gaming term. Uh, if you look at the charts in Metastock, they're very crisp, very clean lines. And if you prefer it that way, that's the default. But if you want to see kind of a smoothed out um, type of line, if you prefer them kind of smoother, uh, like you would in a game or something, you can turn that on and you can see it changes the view of the chart a little bit and makes it a little um, more rounded, a little more crisp in that respect. So you have the different parameters that you can set there. Uh, that's a, just a quick, easy one. I'll turn that back off. And then uh, you can also save your charts in different formats. So you can save them in PNG, bitmap, and JPEG. 
And let's go ahead and show you that. So just come up here to save as image. And I could save this as, uh, what do we have open? Best Buy, BBY. And I can change it to a JPEG, a bitmap, or a PNG. And let's just save it as, as a JPEG. And let's see if it opened up here really quickly. So there's my save chart. So you can see that save chart. So you can save them if you use them for publication or like to email charts to friends. That's a good way to quickly save and send charts. Um, and then you can use your arrow to move your cursor. So this was a request as well, where you can move the mouse with the cursor and move it one bar at a time. If you hold down the shift button, it will go five bars at a time. And where that kind of comes in helpful is uh, in the data window. If I bring up the data window, you can see, oh, let's expand that out a little bit. Actually, let's dock it over here. So if I'm looking at my data window and I want to move through my data window by changing my settings. So you can change your settings here to display data from the mouse cursor position. Always display the most recent active record in the chart or display selected record. So you can see here as I move my, mat, my cursor, it'll update the data window. And if I do it one mouse click with the arrow at a time, it'll update that right there. And then you can also hold down your shift and again, jump five bars at a time. So nice little uh, enhancement there with the data window. Um, let's just pull that out. And of course, if you're docking it, you'd want to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, I didn't show it that way. So there you can see all the values in the data window. Let's go ahead and close the data window there. And let's go back to our chart. Okay, uh, some awesome new enhancements in the Power Console. So th these are some that I, I have just grown to love since we've put these into the chart. Um, I think you'll love them too. So let's go in here and let's go back to Metastock. Let's go into the Power Console. And I'm just going to move me down here to the bottom again as we go through. So the first one here is actually in the Chart tab. So if I'm in the Chart tab, uh, I can expand and contract these. That's just, if you don't use these settings a lot, you can minimize them so you don't have to look at them a lot. But my favorite one here is the search. So in the search, it allows me to look for a symbol or a name or a keyword and identify which folder it's in. And this is great for either online or local data. So if you're in local data, it can search and find which folder something is in. If you're online, it can search and find what folders it's in. So let's just say, you can see I have this expanded out a little bit here. So if I start typing, uh, let's just type in the name Tesla. It's a little company that some people like to trade, right? <laughs> all right, so we have Tesla and you can see all this narrowed down. So now I can see just which folders has the word Tesla in it. So the NASDAQ 100, NASDAQ composite, S&P 100, and S&P 500. So if I expand that, I can then select it and just open it from there. If I had it in local data, I could do the same. So it makes it easier to find your symbols. Uh, you can also do it by symbol. So you can see it does the same narrow down, or I could search for a keyword. Let's say I wanted the keyword oil uh, as I go through and look at it. So all of these have the keyword oil in it. So oil states international and Ranger oil. And I can look in all the different folders to see which particular ones have the name oil in it. So it's a great easy way to search for symbols and names. You still have your instrument search up here, uh, but this is easy to help you search through lists and is especially helpful in local data if you're using local data, okay? The other enhancements here are in the Explorer and System Tester. So the first thing that we've done is if you remember in your current version of Metastock 17 or previous, you would have to uh, scroll down and you had these little arrows to expand and contract and do all this. So we've made that a lot easier. Uh, now you just have the ability to come in here and select multiples uh, you can also add them to favorites. So if let's just say I selected all these candlestick ones and I wanted them in my favorites tab, which is now up here, I could right click on these, add selected explorations to favorites. And now they're over here in my favorites. So if I go to my favorites tab, I can just select all my favorites and then run a scan with them. So it's easier, easier to break it up. You don't have to have the, the favorites at the top, 
and then the other ones at the bottom and kind of differentiate between the two. It's a lot more organized and actually dealing with your explorations and how you want to see them. Now, the other thing is it's always looking for an exploration that you want to run. So let's say I wanted something with the MACD in it and I wanted to find those. So instead of scrolling down and trying to read and see which ones have the MACD in it, I can now just come up here to the search and type in MACD and it'll bring up everything with the MACD or MACD in it. Um, and then I can select one, add it to favorites, or I can just select one, select my list and run my exploration. So it makes it way easier to be able to find, organize and run your scans. And also the same with your system tests. So you have those same favorites up here. You have that same search that you're able to use and organize. You also have that search function down here for looking for symbols or name uh, on something you may want to run an exploration with. So some great enhancements there on what you can do with uh, organizing your, your scans, your system tests, and working through them. So some great quality of life improvements there in the Power Console. Uh, I have come to love that search function when looking for explorations. It helps me because I'm constantly running different scans and doing different things and looking for um, different opportunities. So uh, let's go ahead and let's go into option scope. So th there's been some cool enhancements to option scopes. Now, options analysis may seem specialized if you're just trading options and you're going to like the enhancements that we've made if you do trade options. But if you don't trade options, there's even some awesome enhancements that you can use to analyze your security. So let's talk about those. So first of all, we have put in this put call ratio for option sentiment. And option sentiment is what's important when you're looking at your equity as well. So we'll talk about that in a moment. We've put in these option strategies along with risk graphs so you can analyze and look at the different risk graphs. A top, a top put call search, a customized color for, for risk graphs and shared theme settings. So let's go over here and let's go to option scope. So let's go ahead and choose uh, some that expire in the next 90 days. Let's do 10% around the strike price and let's do monthly options. And let's open up options for Apple. So we'll go ahead and do that. Open up option scope and you'll see it looks very different from the option scope in Metastock 17 uh, where option scope was introduced. And we'll start actually up here with the put call ratio option sentiment viewer. So what we're looking at here and what we're seeing is you, you can see we have it segmented by call and put. And then you have these columns, volume and open interest. In these columns, it's basically taking and summing up, if I look down here to open interest, so anything that I have open on this page of data, it's going to sum up and give me a value up here. So I can see my call open interest is 813,000. Over here, my put open interest is 617,000. So let's say I had a buy signal on, on Apple and I'm curious what options traders are interested in. Well, I could come over here and I can see that there's more interest on the call side than on the put side. And if there's more interest on the call side, it's typically an indication that that's what buyers are interested in is going along. So that's kind of a, a good sentiment viewer for you. Now, if you haven't traded options before, if you do trade options, a good thing to look at is the options uh, risk disclosure summary that you can get from the uh, Options Industry Council. So I recommend taking a look at that. And they've got great information up there about options as well. But this is a, some great information uh, to look at as either an equity or an options trader. I get the same thing as uh, for on the volume side. So it, it'll sum up the volume and show me what the volume is. I can see the volume on the uh, on the call side is 29,944. And then if I come over here to the put side, I have 17,139. So you can see that differentiation in the volume as well in kind of that viewer. The other thing that's cool is I can come over here and if I want to scan for the, the option that has the top open interest, where most of that open interest lies. So on Apple, our price is 168. Well, let's see where the open interest is. So the open interest is at the 165. 
So that it's kind of an interesting thing to say, okay, well, I'm at 168, but the open interest is at the 165. Let's just expand this out over here so you can see that. Let's see where the top volume is. So let's scan on volume. But the volume, so our open interest is at 165, but our volume is actually out here at the 180. Yeah, 180. So that so that's where our volume is. That's where people are trading. That's where people are buying their options uh, on the most side is that 180. So it's really interesting to just be able to click on these top ones and kind of see where the open interest, where the volume is, and kind of play it that way. Well, then what we can do is we can take and apply an options strategy to this. Now, we're not going to go through all nine of the different strategies and explain what they are, but I do want to show you how you can actually just plot uh, a risk graph very quickly. So let's just say we're taking this 180. And let's go down here and say we're just going to do a standard long call. Okay, so if I click on the long call and click on this particular 180 uh, where our uh, volume was, you can see it'll give me a risk graph here. I can see my underlying price, where price is currently, my long call, and then what my break even point is. So here's where I would need to go to break even. So I need to get to 182 to break even. And then it can show me my, my possible um, reward and then my risk as well. You can change any of the settings here by going in and changing the strike price, by changing the buy price and the number of contracts. And if I just click through the different options here, you'll see it will actually update and give me the values of the different risk graphs just by clicking into the different options and seeing what it is. So if you want to quickly analyze your different risks, you can do that as well. So some cool enhancements here to um, the, uh, the option scope. And here I can change my filters uh, down here and up here in the grid settings, and I can change my theme. And if I change my theme here, so if I, if I were to go to this dark mode here, and then minimize this. Now that the same mode would be applied to Quote Center. And let's just go in and look at Quote Center and we can see the enhancements there. So if we go to Quote Center, let's just load, uh, it doesn't matter, we'll just load a, a list of, well, let's just load this 75 stocks here. So if I load that, you'll see it will automatically load up with the specific uh, color scheme that I had checked in. And here we actually added in this gainers losers bar. So this will basically show me what of my list is going up and what of my list is going down. So I have 23 going up, 18 going down, and I can see the percentage of that breakdown as well. So just a quick way to view what the uh, performances of your list that you're looking at. Uh, yes, we want to close that window. Okay, so there's option scope, uh, quote center. And now let's talk about the new systems and strategies that we've added into Metastock 18. So when we were adding these strategies in, we thought about, okay, what, uh, what's kind of popular? What do people really like and what, what do they use? And one of the things that came to mind was the performance systems. So in the performance systems that are included in Metastock 17 and previous, you'd had what's, what was called the the performance systems. And there were 26 of those performance systems included inside of Metastock. Well, we had an add-on that we have called Performance Systems Plus, which is the best-selling add-on of all time here at Metastock. Now, this add-on gave you an additional 54 systems, which would make, give you a total of 80 performance systems. And people really like these combination of systems and giving you these 80 performance systems. So we took this strategy, these systems, a set of strategies, the performance systems, and included them inside of Metastock 18. So this add-on was a total value of $300, and it's just being included for free inside of Metastock 18. So uh, if, you were to, if you were getting this add-on, you might as well just get Metastock 18 because it has everything in it from there. So let's talk a little bit about what's included inside the Performance Systems Plus. So here's all the strategies. And again, we're not going to go through all the strategies here because we'd be here for a couple hours. But I wanna show you some things that you can do with it. But let's talk about how it was kind of designed and built. 
So this was tested over 10,000 combinations of systems and stocks. It was built on daily stock data, no trade delay, no stocks included. Uh, it was based off of low price, low volume stocks that were not included. So it was more high volume, high, high, high price. But when you're testing it, you can test it on whatever you want and see how the performance works. And that, we're going to show you an example of that in just a moment. And then these systems were deemed desirable if the trade efficiency was positive for more than 50% of all stocks analyzed. So let's go in here and let's take a tact with the Performance Systems Plus and let's go into the system tester just to show you an example. So you could take any of these systems and you can scan the market with it and then back test. But I want to show you a system test on a single security as an example. So let's go ahead here and Again, this is where the search comes in awesome. So I can come in here and I can just type in PS for performance system. And that will give me all 80 systems. I can just select all of them. And now I have all my 80 performance systems selected. I do also have this stochastic pops because it has PS in there. So we'll just take that one out. And we have our 80 systems. Now let's just say I wanted to test a security. Let's just take something like Tesla and we're going to run a test on it to see how well these 80 performance systems test on Tesla. So we're going to, going to go ahead and run our test. You can see that running over here in our corner. And once we look at this, we'll look at some of the results and kind of take a view of it here. So here's our results. Let's go ahead and maximize this and let's go on rank on percent change. Okay, so here you can see the linear regression crossover was the best performing system on Tesla over the period of time that we tested. I, I hadn't changed any of the parameters. I just kind of used the defaults. And you can see it gave us 64 trades, 26 were winners, 38 losers. So I had more, more losers than I had winners. So that tells me that my winners were probably pretty big. Now there's some awesome videos on system testing that you can go through. We're not going to go through system testing um, all this, all the variations of it here in this video, but make sure to watch the other videos. Um, uh, like if you get uh, Metastock 18, you get the Unleash the Power of Metastock videos. Those will actually go over how system testing works and how you can use some of these functions when you're actually uh, uh, doing your back tests. Okay, but the thing I do like to look at is the equity line. Let's look at the equity line here and a yeah, pretty good equity line. So you have a pretty good equity line here and what you can see is that we've had growth over time and it's performed pretty well. So let's go back and let's actually put the linear regression system on a Tesla chart to see what it looks like with the buy and sell signal. So let's just open up Tesla here. Okay, so let's, and actually I've already got the system on here. Let's take these indicators off. So this is the linear regression system on Tesla. So if I'm looking at this, you can see here's my buy signal and it actually triggered a short signal today uh, in this particular example. So it's, a, it's got a reversal going. Typically, you, you may not see this when you're actually doing these types of tests. Uh, you know, sometimes you can test the way we just said, take all the systems, put it against this one stock, find the best one, and then we pull it up and it may be in the middle of a trade. So this is kind of a unique example where we're seeing um, a reversal here at the moment. So now when you're ready to trade Tesla, you may want to system test again to see which strategies are working best at the time because things do change and the way stocks change uh, may change based off of the strategy. So you may move from a trending to a volatile stock. So back test it to see what uh, you're seeing at the time. So you can see we've got some pretty good buy and sell signals here. Now, the next question that always comes up is, well, okay, I can buy when it says buy and I can sell when it says sell, but that doesn't always work. We want to protect profits and we want to be able to um, manage our trades. So we worked with a fine gentleman named Daryl Guppy. That's a and if you're not familiar with who Daryl Guppy is, he is a very well-known trader. Uh, he's written lots of books on trading equity markets and Forex markets. He's also a pretty big contributor in different uh, market publications and on 
different TV, uh, TV stations that talk about the markets as a contributor. So very well known, very popular for his methods. Uh, another method that's in Metastock is called the uh, Daryl Guppy MMA or the multiple moving average is one that uh, people are very familiar with. So let's go ahead and talk about what he's uh, given us to add into Metastock 18. So he is very big about protecting profits and managing trades. So he gave us his stop indicators that he had developed. So these are based on the work of Daryl Guppy's book, Stocks and Forex Trading. They provide a trailing stop using ATR or average true range. The, so the long only moves, side, moves sideways or up, and then the short only moves sideways or down. This will make sense once we plot the indicator. It provides confirmation of a trend break and stop loss points. And then it helps with easy identification of the stop. So let's go back to Metastock. And let's look at this past example here. So we have this buy signal on 7722. Okay, so what we're going to do is plot this indicator from this buy date. And that's what's unique about this indicator. It's actually using the buy date as our stop. Okay, so let's go in here and let's find the Guppy Traders ATR long. So we're going to go ahead and plot that on our chart. And what we want to do is put that date that we entered the trade. So if I was taking this short today, I would put today's date in there. So let's put our start of the month. So it was 7, 7, 22. And then you can set the number of periods in the average true range. By default, it's 14. It's what we typically recommend leaving it as. But if you like to kind of shorten that volatility, you certainly can. You can also set a multiplier for the average true range. And then finally, you can set your break on low or close. So Daryl rec recommends the close, but if you like a tighter stop, you can do the low. Okay, so let's leave it as the close and let's go ahead and put on our indicator. I'll merge it with scale on the right. And you can see it will plot from this date forward. Let me make it a little bit thicker for you so you can see it. Let's go to weight. Okay. So what this is doing is it's going to help you know when to get out of a trade by invalidating. So when we get into the trade, we can look here. Now, right here, this has not invalidated. And let me explain why. So even though it's penetrated the line, we set our break on the close. Did it close below our point here? It did not. So it is not invalidated. Okay, so this will trail as the volatility happens and as the stock moves up. So here we come up, you can see it, it touched the line, but it did not close below it, so it's not invalidated. Then we come up here, come up here, and finally we break below on our close, and that invalidates the trade, and that's when we need to get out. So instead of waiting for all, the, all of this to happen and get us over here to this short, it gets us out of the trade back here. Okay, if I was doing it on the low, just to show you, you can see by using the low, it invalidated us way back here. So you can see it's a much tighter stop than if we were to use the close. So let's go ahead and choose okay there. And now you can see that uh, that validation again. So there's our, there's our trade. Now, if I was going short, again, I would go in here and put in our ATR short. Uh, let's see, need to remember today's date. So let's go and hover over here. So 8-6 of 2022. So let's put that on. So 6-8-22. Okay, and so now it's going to plot the line um, for our short there, 826. I was like, wait, why is it going in the past there? Okay, so now it's you can see it's got the dot there, so it will it will draw as we as we move forward since that's the date. So now I could come back here and plot it back here, and you would see it a trail here. Just to give you one more example, let's look at our date, 4-19-2022. Let's put this one on, 419, 2022. Let's change this one to blue so we can tell the difference. 
Okay. And again, uh, as we get our stop, it measures it based off of volatility. So it gives us this stop range here. It did not close there. So it was not invalidated. You can see it trails it down, keeps us in the money until here. And that's where it exits, exits us out. So it makes it really easy to be able to manage your trade and be able to get a, a clearer picture of when you should be getting out and staying into a trade. So it's going to help quite a bit. So I recommend taking a look at the Performance Systems Plus and the Daryl Guppy Traders ATR. Uh, they're both uh, great additions to Metastock 18. So let's go ahead and recap again uh, what we talked about in this presentation. So we talked about the new charting engine, building up the chart from the ground up, all the new enhancements and awesome features, all the customization in the charting styles, indicators, drawing tools, quality of life enhancements in that chart, also quality of life enhancements in the Power Console, uh, all the new features in Option Scope, in Quote Center, and finally, all these new trading strategies that we just went through as well. So now, if you haven't gotten Metastock 18 yet, go ahead and contact us, uh, metastock.com. 801-506-0900 or 882, uh, excuse me, 800-882-3040 or metastock.com slash sales chat where you can chat with a, with a sales rep or leave a message for a sales rep. I hope you found this, this video today instructive, informative, that you've learned quite a bit about Metastock 18 and its capabilities. I do recommend to go ahead and get Metastock 18 if you don't have it yet. It's going to make your life a lot easier, a lot better. Uh, with all those quality of life enhancements and all those new features. Thanks for watching today and successful trading, everybody.